Okay. So my name is Deanne Quinn Miller. Um, I am the daughter of William Quinn, who was the first correction officer killed um, in the Attica riot. Um, he was injured on September 9th during the initial retake, during the initial riot, uh, and died two days later um, due to his head injuries. I felt it was important to write the book now at the 50th anniversary because it's a perspective that I think isn't out there in the general public. Um, someone who is, um, you know, who writes a memoir, writes about their life. And it's a very different perspective than the books that are already out there on Attica, which are mostly historical in nature. So this is um, a very personal um, book, being a memoir. Uh, you know, it recounts my life uh, living in the aftermath of Attica. I certainly hope that people um, understand um, from a different perspective what it's like uh, to be a daughter of a correction officer who died. Um, I think it's important for all of our law enforcement officers, um, especially our correction officers who do these very dangerous jobs um, behind these walls that when they go in and they, you know, work an eight or a 12 hour shift and they make the assumption that they're going to come home uh, like we did that day and, um, you know, due to the dangers of the jobs, um, you know, my father didn't come home and I certainly hope that that never happens to anybody else. So the lessons of Attica are many, right? They're for corrections officers going in now you know, our newly graduated corrections officers, you know, they use the tapes of the retaking to uh, work on during training. Uh, the Department of Corrections has made um, many changes, obviously, in, uh, you know, prison reform, um, safety for the inmates as well as safety for our corrections officers, um, you know, who now have personal radios, and we have CERT teams now who responds to incidents. Um, but Attica will forever be a cautionary tale uh, for, I think, everyone. Citizens of a town like our citizens of Attica, when our the little town was turned upside down for the riot, I think it's a cautionary tale for the correction officers who go in there every single day. We were given a timeline to write the book, and it was originally five and a half weeks, which was crazy. Uh, but it was in the middle of a COVID lockdown, so uh, myself and Gary Craig, who's my co-author, were like, I think we can do that. Um, so, you know, the book itself is, you know, I think 288 pages, but I think I probably could have written a thousand, you know, because there's just so much about Attica. So we just kind of had to pick the highlights because it was, um, you know, we had such a short timeline. We were giving another, we were given another uh, two weeks um, for editing and so on and, you know, some additions. So uh, the book is what it is. It could have been a heck of a lot longer. Um, but um, I'm very happy with it, I'm very proud of it, and uh, I've had some feedback because it was just literally, uh, my book was released yesterday, and um, all day long I got emails and texts about people who had gotten the book, um, and a friend of mine from high school said I couldn't put it down, I read it within the first couple hours of getting it, and she said how fabulous it was. So I'm getting good feedback, which is, makes me feel really good. I really can barely believe that it's been 50 years. You know, it just seems like I've been involved in ACTA for such a long time. I mean, it is part of my life. It's part of who I am. But to think that 50 years have gone by um, is pretty amazing. I think the one thing that disappoints me um, as we come up on the 50th anniversary is the lack of apology. You know, we, you know, as the Forgotten Victims of Attica, these group of 50 families, um, the one thing that we did want was an apology, and it's the, it's the thing that's still is out there and um, I'm still amazed that the apology hasn't come. It doesn't cost anything. Um, you know, it would make the state employees' families, I think, um, have a feeling more of maybe wholeness um, and I am hopeful that um, the 50th anniversary would be a great time for our new governor to come out and um, issue an apology.